What's up? I'm Alex, your entrepreneur. Today I got an amazing question by Ruben. He asks me, how can I protect my files stored on AWS's previous Strapi? Specifically, he wants to only allow specific users to be able to retrieve those files. And I'm gonna show you this done in the most, in the simplest way possible. And um, yeah, the subtitle to this video will be how to launch a file hosting company in 10 minutes with Strapi. So the first thing we need to do is we, we go in Content Types Builder Actually, the first thing absolutely is go in the roles and permission and make it so that the public role can no longer find the uploads. So, and unauthenticated users can no longer find the uploads. Next up, we're gonna actually remove the permission to find to the authenticated permission as well, but we're gonna keep the upload. This is just for convenience. Technically, there is a way to upload a file uh, while creating an entity, which may make it so that we don't need to keep the file upload uh, um, file upload endpoint open, but I'm gonna keep it open just for convenience. You may be able to remove that. Anyway, at this point, we basically can't access the uploads directly. We basically closed off the uploads plugin. The next thing we'll do is we'll go in content types builder and we'll create a new collection type called private upload. And uh, we're gonna have a media, which is gonna be the media. And then we're gonna have a relation, which is gonna be a many to one with a user. So a user can have many private uploads, but a private upload belongs only to one user. So at this point we have this, and um, we're gonna save. And the next thing we'll do is we're gonna uh, check if we have a user. We do, and I think I already have the password here, so this is the user that I got, Gino, with a password 123456. And then I'm gonna go in the private uploads, and I'm gonna create a new private upload associated with the user. And you can refer to the front-end uh, uh, code on file upload for the, the front-end side. But basically now we're gonna have this private upload. And at this point, this private upload belongs to Gino. Technically, anybody can still see these private uploads. So actually nobody can because in the roles and permission, uh, they're gonna be checked off. So I'm gonna go in role and permission authenticated and I'm gonna let find and find one as public, and I'm gonna save. And at this point, any authenticated user will be able to get those private uploads. So I'm gonna copy the JWT from the authentication request. Then I'm gonna go and do a get request on HTTP column slash slash localhost, column 1337 slash, uh, what is this, private dash uploads. Let's see. And this is gonna turn a 403, forbidden, but then I add the JWT token in here, boom, send, and now I can get those uh, uploads, but now anybody could, even, even a different user would be able to. The last change we're gonna need to make is we're gonna need to use the policy that I taught in the course, which is called target user is the same as logged in user. So I'm gonna comment shift N, uh, and I'm gonna get the policy from a different uh, example. You can get it from the second app, which I've recently uploaded as an updated version, Strapi app with components or you can just check the course in which I teach that policy in the policy sections. So I have this uh, policy called is target user logged in and I'm just gonna copy this file. I'm gonna go to my new media library example. I go in config, new folder, policies, and then new file is target user logged in.js, paste this in, Actually, my bad, I just uh, had to paste it here. And then I'm gonna delete the, the, the wrong one. And I'll rename it to the proper name, boom. So now we got this policy. All we gotta do is, is apply this policy to the private upload. So I'm gonna open private upload API, navigate up here in the config, routes, and then get the private uploads.find will have a global global colon colon is target user logged in and the same policy will be applied also to the find one. So that means that only this kind of user can uh, perform that. And uh, this way only my user, only myself will be able to uh, get this uh, ID. Specifically if I now make a request without adding my own ID I'm not gonna be able to retrieve the data or I shouldn't. So let's see if we refresh. Yep, 
Yeah, we also have a couple of console log. So let's restart. Let's make a new request on private uploads. And we get a 401 because we need to specify user.id. I conveniently already have the ID of the user here, which is ID equals true. So all I got at top here is user equal true, which is would be my user. And now I can make a request and I can retrieve only my uploads that belong to me. So I have a second user that I set up, which is called Alex, and I'll uh, um, give it a different upload and save. And what you'll see is that I'm not gonna be able to retrieve the upload that belongs to him. So if I remove user, I can't get it. And if I try and get uh, user equals free, which actually answers a question that I got uh, last day where uh, you could guess the idea of somebody else, but you're not going to be able to use it because you can only get the data that comes from your own ID. So I guess the last uh, change you could make will be to have a controller in the private upload that automatically gets the ID of the user, which you can do by going in the controllers here and then um, customizing the create controller, which is something we cover in the course, where you can get ctx uh, or ctx... Uh, dot state dot user which is the same as here ctx dot state dot user and you can get the id and so you can pass the id when you create the entity so at this point by combining a few concepts such as uh, uh, roles and permissions using policies and uh, um, file upload we were able i was able to show you how to build your own custom and private routes in less than 10 minutes so let me know if you have any other question and have an amazing day